As always, don't forget to check the video description down below for the best prices on tools and parts I use in today's video. Today, I'm looking at this oxygen sensor. I'm gonna show you how to check for an internal failure inside the oxygen sensor, and there's no schematic needed. Let's check it out. All right, so here's our nice little workshop area. Um, I just took a pair of vice grips, and we got a new oxygen sensor and an old oxygen sensor. We had a code that said um, oxygen sensor failure, and I was just gonna verify it, and I said, hey, why not show you guys how to verify it? So what I did, and this is why you don't need a schematic, is because we got the new one, you get the old one. As long as you don't install the part, at some part stores they'll let you take it back. Uh, some will not, just check before you buy it, if you buy it locally. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get you a digital voltmeter, I'll leave a link below in the video description for one of these off of Amazon. And you're going to want to test it in ohms mode. So that is, that's like, uh, what is it, Volt, direct voltage, AC voltage, and that is your ohm sign. Okay. Now the measurement is not very important. We're just going to use our new sensor as a relative kind of um, measurement. And what you're going to do is you're just going to go through and touch all these leads. Now what I found with touching every single lead is that on the new one none of them have a connection except these two these top two here um, but just touch every single one in resistance mode it's not going to hurt the part um, to see which one has resistance and how much resistance and we'll see here in just a second how much resistance this one has okay so now I got it kind of set up here and you can see we got 3.3 ohms okay and is that regular ohms or thousand ohms that is regular ohms. Okay, so 3.3 regular ohms. And then it, you see if I go here, it's just gonna say over the limit, over the limit, and I checked each single one, and touching all of them together, and this is the only one where it actually has three ohms. Now, when we take a look at our bad sensor, get on here, and hey, check that out. Nothing. So over the limit, and you can see I've got the connectors positioned the same way, and there should be about three, three and a half ohms between this connector and that connector. And that is just a simple, quick way, and you can do this really with um, a lot of sensors um, that are like a four pin, three pin, or two pin. Um, usually there should be resistance, you know, in some of those. Once you start to get up in like six, eight, ten pins, it's gonna be more difficult to um, know exactly what you're looking for, and you could just be all there, day, there all day just playing with the pins and stuff. So. That's just kind of a quick reference, a quick way to test the inside circuit of the oxygen sensor. Um, just if you don't want to install the new one and, you know, take a risk of not being able to take it back because you already installed it and it did the same thing. This will not tell you if the oxygen sensor is, like, performing poorly. This is just going to show you if there's an internal failure in the circuit. There can also be intermittent failures. So when it's hooked up on the car and when it gets to the right temperature, then the connection gets undone. It could be a lot of things, but this is just gonna give you peace of mind. Like in my case, I know this sensor is bad now um, in a case of a failure like that. So anyways, that's how you can check your oxygen sensor. This was the downstream one and that concludes the video. Thanks for watching.